Hey, what's going on? Uh, I saw a video by MJ Lorton today. Um, if you haven't seen his channel, you should check it out. Um, he does some pretty cool videos. Uh, he came up with the idea of measuring the speed of sound using an oscilloscope. Uh, the way he did it, he used a function generator and he hooked it up to a speaker. And then he put a microphone at the other end of his workbench. Uh, I think he, he started with one meter and realized that that was actually a big enough distance to uh, measure it pretty accurately. <laughs> Which is, which is actually what I replicated. Uh, I just have a slightly different uh, methodology. Uh, nothing wrong with his method of doing it. I just, uh, I don't know, the way he did it seemed a little more difficult to find good edges for the cursors to measure with. Uh, so what I did was, uh, first off, I wanted, just to make sure the numbers aren't gonna be off and I won't, you know, I don't, I don't want the, uh... okay, so the speed of sound uh, varies depending on temperature, pressure and humidity and so I wanted to do the math to get the exact speed of sound for my lab so uh, I did the math and so the temperature in here is uh, 25.39 centigrade pressure is 101.93 kPa and then humidity is 20 percent so I did the math and uh, the speed of sound in my lab is 346.85 meters per second and then do um, so we get meters per second, and then I want to know what the time what the time is for only one meter. So I cross multiply, and I get 2.88 millisecond travel time from my front microphone across to my back microphone, which is exactly one meter away. Uh, this is an old whiteboard I have that started to kind of crinkle. So I'm glad I didn't throw it away because uh, I found a pretty good use for it today. Diagonally, it is exactly one meter across. So I uh, what I did was got two of my smallest breadboards and then I put an Electrat microphone on it and obviously they they need a little bit of supporting hardware so all it is is a, a resistor and a blocking cap and so it's basically what I have going uh, for both and then I got them plugged into my oscilloscope and then the power is coming from uh, my Rigol power supply and obviously the back microphone uh, the intensity is going to be a lot less by the time it gets to that microphone, so I gave it a slightly higher voltage. Uh, so, anyways, 2.88 milliseconds should be the dis should be the uh, the distance in time between the two waveforms. And I measured it, and look what I got: delta x, uh, the, which is the difference between my two x cursors, is 2.88 milliseconds on the money. So I will show you really quickly. So channel one, which is in yellow, uh, I moved. I gave him some uh, offset in in the uh, y axis, so you can see the two waveforms. It's really hard to see them when they were right on top of each other. So the yellow one is the first microphone, and the green one is the second microphone. And as you can see, the orange dotted lines are my two cursors. So that's X one and X two. So delta, delta X is the uh, difference between the two cursors in time. And I have the time base set to 1.41 uh, milliseconds per division. And look at the difference between the two cursors, 2.88. That is exactly what my math told me that it would be. That is freaking awesome. I'm really excited. <laughs> shows you I'm a nerd when I get excited about something this stupid. But uh, come on, you know, it shows that you're able to actually measure the speed of sound uh, with... Well, I mean, obviously, if you don't have an oscilloscope, you can't measure it, but uh, I'll probably do the same thing with my cheap Rigol. I have, like, a, I think it's 100 megahertz, two-channel. It's just a little DS1102E. Uh, I should be able to do this with that also, so uh, I'll, I'll probably do that just to show you that you don't need an expensive uh, oscilloscope like I have to uh, pull it off. But check that out. Two beautiful waveforms. Uh, I measured on the first big peak which in both of these cases was a downward peak so I measured and put the cursor there and right there and that's freaking awesome and now you might say I might have fabricated this you know I could uh, I could use a microcontroller or an FPGA to send two pulses out uh, with you know exact timing to get that but I'm gonna do this live and show you so then uh, you know, and I'm going to try to do this uncut so that you can see that I did not fabricate this and I actually <laughs> measured this correctly. So uh, thank you, MJ Lorton, for the idea. This was uh, actually really fun to try out. Uh, and 
if you wanna, if you have any questions, let me know. Or if anyone has any questions as to how I did this, uh, just post a comment or send me a message, and I will let you know. Uh, but you should be able to figure everything out from uh, everything in this video. But uh, now I'm gonna set it back to single shot, and then I'm gonna speak a little more quietly so I don't accidentally trigger it. And uh, I found that clapping a hurts my hands when I clap hard enough to get at the trigger. Uh, B uh, wasn't as clean of a waveform. So what I actually found worked great, which is kind of funny because it's actually kind of its use, uh, is to use my clapper board. I have a, oh, it's right here. It's the uh, clapper board I use to sync my audio for uh, the videos I do. So uh, I actually use that to, um, to give me my nice, sharp, crisp sound to trigger off of. So actually, before I back up, I'm going to turn the cursors off so the screen's nice and clear. It's in single shot mode, waiting to trigger. Uh, now obviously when I back across the room, you're not gonna be able to hear me because my microphone is right here. So um, I'll try to speak up, but I wanna speak up too loudly because I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna get at the trigger. But uh, here's one microphone. Uh, and the reason there's two resistors, uh, I needed a lot lower value than 10K. And instead of digging through a giant drawer of resistors, I thought it'd be easier to use two 10Ks in parallel to get 5K, which is close enough. And then I just bumped the voltage up a little bit since uh, the resistance resistance still wasn't quite as low as I wanted, but... But uh, yeah, it works. And then so power goes up to there. And I got my two probes going. Single shot mode, let's do this. I'm gonna try to get everything in the shot at once so you can see on the screen that it triggers so you know that I'm not making this up. Okay, here we go. There we go, so let's turn channel two off. We'll work with channel one, cursors, X1. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be close, though. Well, the first time it was dead on. Hopefully it'll be dead on again. Uh, I guess I didn't clap it very loud using only one hand. Let's try one again. Oh, that might be why. Now let's... Um, adjusting channel 2 just a hair, so it'll be a little easier to get. Well, there you go. I wasn't able to get exactly 2.88 showing you live, but uh, 2.86 is uh, what I would say is close enough. And there are a lot of uh, other elements involved that could be throwing this number off a hair. Uh, for one, when I record, uh, I close the door to the uh, lab, so it gets a little warmer in here because of my instruments. Uh, I have a tube amp for my headphone setup on my main rig. Uh, I got my power supply kicking out some heat. If you put your hand behind it, you can feel it gets pretty warm. Uh, it gets a little toasty in here. So the temperature could have changed a little, just enough to change it, you know, that tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Uh, another thing, the microphones could have moved a hair. But uh, the big thing is, though, it's right in the freaking ballpark. And in fact, the first time, as you saw, I mean, it was dead on, so. Uh, that right there shows that using an oscilloscope, you can measure the uh, speed of sound, just like MJ Lorton said. So thank you, was it Martin, I think, uh, for giving me this idea. That was awesome to uh, awesome and really fun to try out. So yeah, if you have an oscilloscope, even a cheaper one, I think, um, I would imagine that about any oscilloscope would be able to do this regardless of its bandwidth. Um, as long as you got two channels on it, uh, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to measure this. So... Uh, all I used were just two regular old Electret microphones. They weren't on break, breakout boards or anything. I put them in a little mini breadboard. 
uh, the way I connected them. Uh, ground went straight to ground. Um, the output, uh, let's see how to hook it up. The output went through 5k worth of resistance up to VCC, which in this case is 12 volts. And then uh, from the middle point, uh, I use the uh, blocking capacitor electrolytic, and that's the point that I measure from, which is that yellow wire. And the cap's actually bridging across the, uh, the middle gap. And that's how I have both of them wired up. And uh, that's really all you got to do. Set them a meter apart. Or actually, you know, the farther apart you do this, the more accurate the measurement will be because there's... <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more time in flight, and so it's not going to be as as bad. But uh, you saw the first time, uh, even only with it being a meter across, I was able to get exactly 2.88, which is, according to my math, what it should be in this room with its current air pressure, temperature, and relative humidity. So, uh, yeah, freaking awesome. Super excited that uh, I can do this. You gotta love science. <laughs> you don't even need to take someone's word for it, you know? You just uh, try it yourself and then find out, you know? Uh, yeah, so I encourage anyone out there with an oscilloscope and a couple Electrap microphones, or maybe you've got some other way to do this. Maybe uh, some piezo elements hooked up through an op amp might, might work. I don't know. But uh, yeah, give it a whirl and let me know how you do. Uh, I was able to pretty much get it dead on, and so uh, yeah, I will uh, talk to you guys later.